We believe that when you book an all-inclusive resort, the quality of the food and beverages is a big part of what you're paying for. I'm Nancy, and in today's video, we will be walking you through the finer details of the four restaurants at Hyatt Solara Riviera Maya, as well as their bars. The purpose of our channel is to pay it forward, so we will share our opinions with you after our week-long stay here and let you know what you get for your money. We are self-funded, we are not sponsored, and we're not trying to sell you anything. Our hope is that the videos on our channel help you decide if this is a resort that you should or should not be putting on your shortlist for your next vacation. Hyatt Solara Riviera Maya is a smaller resort of just under 300 rooms, so it's understandable that there are fewer restaurants here than you may be used to at some other resorts. We've already made videos giving you our overall review of the resort, and we've made a second one detailing the different room options available, and letting you know some details about the rooms that are important to know before you choose one. In this video, we're going to dive in and talk about the food and drinks. Let's start with the buffet restaurant called El Comador. The buffet restaurant offers breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but that does tend to change a bit depending on how busy the resort is. During our stay, it was open for all three meals daily with a different themed buffet dinner. I did hear though that it's not always open for dinner, just keep that in mind. There is both indoor dining with air conditioning and a semi-outdoor dining area with large open windows and great views over the resort as you can see here. The buffet food is really good. There are a variety of options available. Breakfast didn't really change at all. It was the same things every day. That's fine. It was not the best buffet we've experienced, nor was it the worst. And as I said, it was good. It was fresh and I always like the cook to order omelet stations. They have a gluten-free bread area and lots of different milk alternatives that would be good for those with dietary sensitivities. We did find that the breakfast buffet got a bit boring after a week. We switched to room service for a couple of our mornings to vary things up and the room service was really good. It was fresh, it was delivered on time, and you can order it the night before and choose your delivery time or you can dine on demand. I'll pop in some room service pics here so you can see it along with the buffet. Room service is a bit of a limited menu. I suggest taking a screenshot of your order before you submit it online. We had items missing from our order, but I had no way of showing them what was missing because I forgot to take a screenshot of the order before I submitted it. So just a heads up to you. Don't be surprised when your room service delivery person suggests eating your room service in your suite rather than on your balcony. The Kawadis are abundant at this resort. There are no room service delivery boxes at Hyatt, so they will leave you a call button for dish retrieval so you don't leave any dishes outside of your room to attract even more of them. As I said, the buffet is open for lunch and dinner as well as breakfast. Many adult-only resorts don't have a dinner buffet, so if you're a fan, this might be good to know. We found the service at El Commodore to be hit and miss. Some days we would have a server that was great, and other days we would have a server that would forget to come back and refill our morning coffee, or would forget that we ordered a mimosa. But it is a buffet, really, so the service is minimal anyway. Not a big deal. If you have an early morning excursion booked or you have an early flight out, they set up a small grab-and-go buffet at the social bar, which I think is really thoughtful. Beside El Commodore is Coffee Republic, the resort coffee shop. They offer different espresso-based beverages and some teas. They have a gelato counter that is really good. We often grab some gelato as we pass by Coffee Republic. There are a few pastries to choose from and a couple of sandwich options that they can put into a panini press for you. I really enjoyed the soft pretzels from Coffee Republic, but I did wish there was something to dip them into, like a cheese sauce or maybe even just mustard or something. I don't have much of a sweet tooth, but my husband does, and he was a big fan of the financier pastries. The staff in Coffee Republic was friendly and helpful, and we stopped here at least once, often twice per day. Right outside the entrance to El Commodore is a staircase that leads you down to the resort's Asian restaurant called Tempest. Tempest has three dining options. The first is the a la carte option. The menu is small, but most of the dishes were good. 
Tempest also has tempanyaki tables for a show cooking type of dinner experience. You need to make reservations for the tempanyaki tables, of course, because there's a definitive start and stop time to a show cooking experience. Tempest also has a small sushi counter, and after eating everywhere at least twice on this trip, Tempest sushi counter was the favorite of our whole group. If you don't like raw fish, then this one probably isn't for you, but our team's vegetarian was not on this trip, so we dined at the sushi bar three times during this week. Up until now, the sushi at the Ibero Star Grand has been my favorite, but Tempest is equally as good. You need to make reservations for the sushi counter and the tempanyaki with the restaurant concierge or with your butler. We found the service at Tempest to be hit and miss. We were here three times for dinner and often dishes we ordered were forgotten or given to the wrong person. Not a big deal as we corrected or pivoted as necessary, but it was noticeable. There's also inconsistency among the servers. The server on our first night told us that sake is included in the all-inclusive plan, but if we wanted to order a specific type of sake, then there would be an extra charge. On our second night at Tempest, our server told us that there's an extra charge for all sake and none of it's included. One night while dining from the a la carte menu, our server let us modify the chef's special sushi platter, and another night, a server told us that there were no modifications allowed. Inconsistent service, to say the least. The Mediterranean dinner option is Capri Grill. I thought it was nice that they kept the Capri title as a bit of a tribute to the resort's previous name. Capri Grill was really more Italian heavy rather than Mediterranean and the dishes here went from great to okay. They start you off with some fresh bread rolls with olive oil and balsamic and these were fantastic. Some other highlight dishes were the beef and salmon carpaccios, the chicken parm, the salmon, the frito misto and the caprese salad. We did find that many of the pasta dishes were either too al dente or they were a bit dry without quite enough sauce to bring the dish together. For the most part, everything tasted good, some better than others, but that's subjective. They did a good job with the steak dish and the salmon was cooked exactly how we ordered it. The desserts were simple, but nice. As you can see, the menus at all of the restaurants are fairly limited, so it was easy for our group of four to pretty much taste everything on the menu over the course of the week we were there. The last restaurant on the property is Lola Beach Restaurant and Mezcaleria. It's kind of two restaurants in one, so let me explain it a bit. Lola Beach Restaurant is the primary restaurant located over the pool bridge and up the staircase. Lola Beach is open for lunch and dinner with a different menu for each. The lunch menu is a bit larger than the dinner menu, I think. There are different ceviches, salads, tacos, sandwiches, fish, ribs, chicken, and desserts. It's a great spot for lunch. We really liked everything we ate off the lunch menu at Lola Beach. Some of our favorites were the whole fried fish, the quesadilla tacos, the tuna tostada, veggie ceviche, and the mussels. For dinner, Lola Beach has similar items, but changed up a bit. Some salads, soups, different tacos, a quesadilla or burrito, as well as chicken or fish or surf and turf 
with a beef tenderloin and shrimp. Now here's the kicker. For us, there was a big disconnect between the quality of the food coming out at lunch and that coming out for dinner. I was disappointed in my first meal at Lola Beach for dinner. My spinach salad was bland, my burrito was watery, and although my surf and turf steak was cooked perfectly, it lacked flavor, and the shrimp that accompanied it were gummy. We left our first dinner there feeling like the food was boring and really mediocre. Then we returned for lunch a couple of days later, and it was a totally different experience. The food at lunch was fantastic. Everything had good flavors and textures, and I left assuming that our dinner was just maybe a bad night. So a day or two later, we returned for dinner. Well, I guess it wasn't a bad night. The food again was boring and not well cooked or presented. The shrimp were especially challenging because whether it was in the soup or as part of the surf and turf, the shrimp were served whole, which is fine. I don't mind the shrimp head and I don't mind peel and eat shrimp, but they weren't cleaned or deveined. It was really tricky to pull the whole shrimp out of my soup to try and remove the intestinal tract out of the back of it with a spoon in my hands. Why? I don't know about you, but personally, I am not a fan of eating the intestinal tract of the shrimp. With the number of shrimp I saw returning to the kitchen, I don't think it was just me. This restaurant was such a disconnect for all of us. Lunch was great. Dinner was mediocre. The Mezcaleria part of this restaurant is fantastic. It is simply a tequila and mezcal cart with all of the ingredients to make different margaritas and mezcalitas. It is manned by a bartender who will come to your table and offer to make you one of his or her specialty cocktails. Unless you order a specific type of mezcal or tequila, they are part of your all-inclusive and they're great. When the restaurant is not busy, then the bartender will bring the mezcaleria cart out to make drinks around the pool for everybody. These are delicious and a bit dangerous. At the back of Lola Beach is the Lola Beach Snack Spot. I don't know why they use the same name except that it is that two-in-one thing I mentioned earlier. The snack area for Lola Beach is a casual dining spot where you can eat outside, in your swimsuit, enjoy the breeze coming off the water, and the menu here is small, but we ate everything on it and it was really good. The poke bowl rivaled those we had on Oahu last year, the burgers were excellent, the buffalo wings were crispy and hot, and the pizzas were creative, thin crust, and straight out of the outdoor pizza oven. Just a quick note to my pizza-loving friends, their version of ham on these pizzas, at least while we were there, is some version of a hot dog, but it was still tasty. It was just not the ham that I was expecting. This place was our favorite spot for lunch, and we ate here five times during our week-long stay. The servers were friendly, quick, and helpful. You can't get food brought to your pool or beach chair at Hyatt unless you book and pay for a cabana. The rental comes with a lunch menu that your butler will bring for you. Otherwise, you need to go to one of the restaurants for lunch. We heard that sometimes the resort sets up a lunch grill off to the side of the pool, but they didn't the week we stayed, so I can't tell you about it. We were also looking forward to the churro cart that the resort brings out in the mornings just outside of the buffet entrance, but that didn't come out the week we were there either. All of the menus have a specialty cocktail available for an extra charge, and there are also steaks, oysters, and lobster on the menus that have extra fees if you want to order them. We did find that the restaurant menus are too limited if you're staying there a week. We were there for eight days, and the menus weren't big enough to not have to repeat dinners and dishes. Overall, we felt like the resort could really do with either one more restaurant or menus that are a little bit larger. We found ourselves missing an a la carte option for breakfast, Doing our research for this resort, before we decided to book it, we saw that sometimes Lola Beach or Capri Grill offers an a la carte breakfast. But during our stay, the only breakfast options were the buffet or room service. Once or twice a week, they sometimes have a theme night with dinner on the beach. This is Caribbean night. They set up outdoor grills and a small buffet with tables set up on the beach. It was really nicely done with good food and a fun way to meet other guests. 
All of the restaurants have paper menus available. If you want to completely disconnect from your phone, you easily can. On that note, the Wi-Fi was a bit spotty at the resort and there was little to no signal on the beach. The dress code is more casual here. Men can wear a collared shirt and dress shorts with closed-toed shoes. We saw many different levels of dress while we were here. Men in long pants and dress shirts with women in long flowing cocktail dresses, like a great date night attire, and others wore golf shirts and shorts or a simple sundress. It was a mixed bag really, but everyone looked like they at least made an effort to clean up after the pool or beach day. If you're a vegetarian, this resort may be a bit tricky to eat at. Definitely doable, but as a vegetarian, you will have very limited choices. Of course, as always, the Italian restaurant had the most options, but as you can see from the menus, there are not too many little green leaves beside the dishes. You'll need to specify that you're vegetarian when you check in and again to the hostess and see what they offer in addition to the menu items. Hyatt Zalara Riviera Maya has a fantastic sports bar called Legends that opens in the evenings and it's really well attended. They have a great central bar that you can sit around and there are also tables and chairs to watch your favorite game or event. There are vintage video games, board games, darts, pool and other games and they also bring in bands and musicians for live music. Some of them are really talented. They don't serve food in Legends, although they put out a small table with late night snacks like popcorn, hot dogs or taquitos. I won't say that they were good, but they do fill a void if you've overindulged. We went to the sports bar every evening after dinner and there was always something going on. It's not the fanciest sports bar we've been to, but it was definitely one of the most fun. Let's talk about the bars and drinks at Hyatt Zalara Riviera Maya. This resort does a fantastic job with mixology, up there with some of the best resorts we've been to over the years. The cocktails themselves are good and there are some very creative drinks. The main resort bar is called Social and it is just off the lobby entrance. The resort as a whole does not necessarily offer high tier alcohol, more mid tier, but what they do with it is outstanding. Social Bar has several smoke chambers to smoke an old-fashioned or something else, and I've only seen this at a Barrel Star Grand before now. Many of the bars have fresh fruit juices rather than sugary syrups. They have creative garnishes of herbs and with several different dehydrated fruit options, not just the ubiquitous lime slice. Even the bartenders at the Swim Up Bar measured properly and garnished beautifully so every drink you ordered was consistent and pretty. There is a lot of confusion about which alcohols are included in your all-inclusive rate. Don't make the mistake of assuming that what you see at the bar is included. Yes, they have some high-end alcohol on display, but there's a good chance there will be a fee for it. When in doubt, ask or you may get a surprise on your bill at checkout. Some nicer spirits may be included, but we found that rather than have them on display at the bar, they're hidden underneath. I really don't like it when they do this, but many resorts do it. So if there's something specific that you like and it is included, just keep asking for it by name in your cocktail. So rather than say, I'd like an old fashioned, specify that you want a Johnny Walker Black old fashioned. All of the bartenders are really well trained and they know their stuff and they actually measure things so the drinks come out consistent. There are two bars in addition to Social and the Legend Sports Bars and these are outside. There's a swim out bar in the pool one side of it's a swim up and the other side has swings and the last bar is over by Lola Snack and it is the bar that's closest to the beach. Another great plus to the bars at Hyatt Zalara is the option of canned vodka seltzers, Amstel Ultra 85 calorie beer and Heineken 0%. They don't always have every flavor and option available but just ask your server. These were a really unique part of the all-inclusive here. They also have many options of non-alcoholic cocktails at the bars Social Bar even has a great de-alcoholized gin that they use in non-alcoholic cocktails, so if you don't drink at all, or if you're a light drinker, then there are plenty of options rather than just a soda. 
The included wines are decent. They offer two whites, Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay, as well as two reds, Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. But there's not an included rosé. The sparkling wine is also nice and there's a wine list if you want to purchase a specific bottle. Before I end the video, I want to touch on how the resort handles food allergies. We contacted the resort in advance about a severe food allergy to kiwi in our group. They noted it into the computer and when we checked in, it was on file. Each time we checked into a restaurant, it was attached to the room number and the hostess reconfirmed it. They were really excellent in handling it. All week long, the resort was on top of the food allergy and triple checked everything. They explained that the restaurant hostess highlights the allergy on the server's order pad and the food is prepared in a separate part of the kitchen. While we were there, they had fresh juices at the bars, including passion fruit and kiwi juice for some specialty cocktails. The bartenders were very good at remembering the kiwi allergy and they would use a new shaker or our thermal cup as the shaker to avoid any cross-contamination. They also avoided any garnish just in case. The way Hyatt handled our food allergy is by far better than any other resort we have been to in Mexico. Something guests need to be aware of, you are not welcome to stay and enjoy the all-inclusive after 3 p.m. without paying. It used to be that you could enjoy the resort until your ride came to return you to the airport on your last day. This is no longer the case, and I don't want you to be caught unaware of it like we were. If your transfers will be picking you up after 3 p.m. on the day of your departure, you will be expected to buy a day pass for each person in your party in order to enjoy the all-inclusive. This is one of the most money-grabbing policies I have seen in a while and a terrible way to treat their paying guests, but it is new and they did it. If you have a later flight, then Excellence Valentine and Barrowstar TRS Secrets and most other resorts let you use all of the facilities until your transfer picks you up. So just make sure that you factor in this expense from Hyatt before booking. Overall, we enjoyed a lot of the food at Hyatt Zalara Riviera Maya. The four of us unanimously agreed that many of the dishes need some work in order to compete with the other resorts and their restaurants in the same price range. They didn't have the flavor or quality that we expected, with the exception of the sushi counter at Tempest, which we found to be exceptional, and the Lola snack lunches. Those were great. The service in the restaurants was hit and miss all week, and there seems to be a lack of training and communication with the service staff. The mixology at Hyatt is where they shine, absolutely. Whomever designed the drink menus and trained the bartenders should be commended because they were consistently great all week long. The options of non-alcoholic cocktails as well as canned seltzers made the drinks at Hyatt memorable and it was very considerate. If they can overhaul the restaurant offerings to match the quality of their beverages, then this resort will be able to compete. Thank you so much for watching. We hope this video and others on our channel help you decide where to spend your hard-earned vacation dollars because there's an overwhelming number of resorts to choose from. Please consider subscribing to our channel and sharing it with your friends to show your support. It really helps us out and it costs you nothing at all. I hope you have a fantastic week ahead and we'll be back soon with more new travel escapes.